All right, so welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at how to make a resizable game menu here that will display correctly no matter what resolution you're displaying it at. So stick around and let's dive right in. All right, so diving right in, uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to make a new scene. Uh, and this scene is going to be kind of the base menu screen that we're going to have. So as my root node, I'm going to make it be a canvas layer. So canvas layer. And I'm going to call this um, just base menu. We'll call it a panel. And then I'm going to make a couple children of this. The first one I'm going to make is a margin container because I want to have, um, you can kind of see this, maybe you can't see it very well, but there's this blue line here that represents the screen. I want nothing to get within, say, 20 pixels of the edge of the screen, um, relative to you know however big your display is. So on my margin container here, um, I'm going to choose layout and put it to full rect. And then down here in my custom constant, or constants, I'm going to set the margins to be 20 in each direction. So 20 left, 20 right, 20 top, and 20 bottom. And you'll see it. Um, nothing that's going to be inside of here is going to be within that 20 pixels of the edges. Now, what I want is I want my uh, logo to take up the majority of the top of the screen. So logo here and then buttons down here. So what I'm going to do is rather than have it be three items in one vertical box where I would have logo, button, button, that would break the screen up into thirds. I'm going to instead uh, use one vertical box with two children. One child will be the logo and then the other child will be another vertical box that holds the buttons. So the buttons will only take up the lower half of the screen. So as a child of my margin container, I'm going to add a V box container, this one right here. Uh, and you can see that because of my um, my 20 pixel offset, that this only goes to those within 20 pixels of the edge. And then as a child of my vertical, vertical box container, I'm going to add a texture rect and another vertical box container. The box container. There we go. So there's not a whole lot of separation between these two. Um, I'm going to go to my main vertical box container. I'm going to call this, um, I don't know, I'll call this uh, logo and buttons just to make things a little more clear. This is going to be logo and then this is going to be buttons. So it doesn't have to be logo, let's call it graphic and buttons because it won't always be the logo. So graphic and buttons. This is graphic and then the second one is buttons. So I'm going to choose graphic and buttons here and I want to go to the custom contents or constants and I want the separation to be uh, say 30 pixels between the two. So now if I look at graphic and buttons there's more of a separation between the two. Now for my buttons I'm going to add a couple child nodes and these are going to be texture buttons. So one is going to be the play button. Actually, we'll call this button one instead so that this is more um, uh, generalizable. And I'm going to add another texture button. I'm going to call this one button two. And on my buttons vertical box container in custom constants, I'm going to make the separation here be 20 pixels between these two. So. 20 pixels between them. There we go. So this is my base menu panel here. I'm going to save this. So save scene. I'm going to put it in my scenes folder. Just save it right there. Um, all right, cool. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to import the new art that I have. And uh, that's in the itch uh, folder. If you go to itch.io, where you can find the regular um, art for everything that we've been doing. You'll find these new buttons, uh, a little logo, and then a little settings banner. So I'm going to create a new scene that's going to inherit from the base menu panel. And this one's going to be called um, main. 
for my graphic here, this is going to get the little Godot Match 3 logo that I made. And I want to turn Expand on, uh, which is going to make it collapse like that. But then I want to go down to the uh, Rect option. And I want its minimum size to be, uh, let's make it 512 on X and 512 on Y. So that's its minimum size. Actually, yeah, let's, let's actually go 488 in both directions. It's 488, 488. There we go. Uh, okay, and now for my button one, uh, I'm going to look at my textures, and this is just going to be the play button. So I'm just going to grab the play button, pull it in there for the normal texture, and it makes it gigantic. I want to turn on expand, and I want to keep my stretch mode to keep aspect centered and then again I'm going to go down to rect and in rect I'm going to set its minimum size to be 512 on X and 256 on Y and that makes it take up roughly a quarter of the screen and then for button 2 um, that's going to be my settings button here so same thing I'm going to turn on expand and keep aspect centered I'm going to open up my textures and pull this in under normal textures. And because I ticked expand, you don't see it right away. But if I go down to rect and give it a minimum size of 512 by 128, there it is right there. Now, uh, if I hit play here, there's no background for this, so it's really kind of boring. I could add the, um, oh yeah, I do want to save this. So this is, I'm going to call this main menu panel. There we go. Um, there's no background, so this is kind of boring. You could add the background that I put with this, the kind of starry night background. But because we use the margin container, everything is nice and resizable. So no matter what size the display is, everything will look the size it's supposed to look. So there we go. Now we're going to make another one of these. So scene, new inherited scene, and I'm going to inherit from the base menu panel again. I'm going to call this one settings. And for my graphic, uh, I'm going to use the settings here. So this little settings banner I made. And I want to turn on expand. And then for my rect, my minimum size is going to be, let's do 488 by 488. And then for my buttons, button one is going to be to turn the sound on or off. So I'm just going to use the sound on here. Turn on expand, stretch mode, keep aspect centered, textures. It's going to be the sound button. And then again, I don't see it until I go down here to rect and give it a minimum size. And this minimum size is going to be 512 by 256. So there we go. It's taking up most of the screen. And then my second button here is going to be a back button to go back to the main menu. So keep aspect centered. And then uh, textures. And then this is going to be my back button. And expand is on, keep aspect centered. And then I want to go to my rect. And this one is going to be minimum size of 512 by 128. And there we go. So now here's what this one looks like. And again, oh, yep, I want to save this. This is going to be settings panel. Uh, and again, this is going to be nice and resizable. Not super interesting to look at, though. Nothing happens when you touch these buttons. So let's uh, set things up, and let's make a few things happen when you touch these buttons. So for now, I'm going to close my settings panel and my, my, menu, my main menu panel. I can even close my base menu panel. And I'm going to make uh, another new scene. And this is going to have a, let's do a, just a control as its main node. And I'm going to call this uh, game menu. And then I'm going to add a couple children to this. So, and I, I'm not using a node. Instead, I'm going to link an existing scene. So I click on the chain links and go to scenes. And I want to link main menu. And then I also want to link um, settings panel. 
Okay, sorry for that weird cut. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave these here right now, and then we're going to cover how to animate these panels moving in and out. So the main idea is that our settings panel here is going to start uh, off screen. So by off screen, to make that happen, uh, I'm going to move its transform to be 576 on X so that it's currently not visible. And then I'm going to animate a transition in. Um, and then animate the main menu out. And then when you push play, then we'll just transition to the next scene. So um, I'm going to save this scene as game menu. There we go. And next time, we'll take a look at animating the transition between these two. So uh, thank you very much for watching. There's a super short message after this uh, that you could stick around for. And I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.